friends, this is Grace, and um, welcome to my first process video of 2016. Um, I am going to share with you a little bit about um, my plans for this layout before I move on and fast forward to um, my process. So first of all, I want to let you know that this is going to be a double page spread, and I'm going to try something new um, that I've never done before, which is to pre-print my journaling. So I have um, my journaling for this specific layout printed on this this part right here, another one for this, and so there's four, basically four layouts that journaling is already printed, and so um, I don't know if this is going to be more efficient for me going forward, pre-printing my journaling, or doing it the very last, but I wanted to see how it goes because um, one of my goals this year is just to be efficient with my scrapbooking and so we will see if me having the journaling already set will help me to get my pages done faster or will it hinder me because I don't know where my journaling is going to go and so this having it pre-printed already will kind of dictate where it's going to go and so maybe that will affect my design and it will be bad so we shall see. The next thing I wanted to cover is um, one of the things too that I wanted to use up are some of the items that I have on hand that um, are very themed products and so I'm not very much into the themed products I kind of want to miss mix match my products sorry about the baby but um he's fine he's just he doesn't want to be away from mommy so it's not like I'm neglecting him but anyways um but I have these items from Paper House, and I have the um, dimensional stickers, I have the um, single layered stickers, and then I have some papers that are left over from a project that I made with them um, a long time ago. But um, I wanted to kind of see if, even though this is very themed, if I can work it with my style. So that is another um, goal that I have this, this year that I wanted to see if I can do. And then the next thing is I just pulled out some papers, other papers that would coordinate with my pictures. Again, this is a double page spread, so um, I'm using a lot of pictures here and see if all the elements that I have gathered will work. Um, I don't know how many pictures I have. There's four, eight, twelve and then 14 so there's 15 pictures and most of them are two by three except this focal picture which is a four by six and then this paper is from a die cuts with a view um stack i forgot what it's called but it's one of those you know thick stacks and then this one is from the jen hadfield um, diy line and then i have pink cardstock two of them for my background and then I'm also going to be using the back side of this Craftsmith um, pack as my white cardstock. So uh, I'm just going to go and fast forward and then see how it goes. Alright, so um, I am going to start off with these white cardstock base as um, my background and um, initially I had thought that I needed to do the pink as my second background but it was just too big and so I am going to end up cutting just using one of them and cutting them in half. That banner paper is super pretty and um, I definitely wanted to use that but I only had one sheet of it so I decided to do um, kind of the bookend style of my double page spread. If you have seen me um, do that double page inspiration um, series that I did last year, um, there is going to be some repeat of the same ideas that I made with the four layouts, the, the next four layouts that I'm making with those four layouts that I created before. Um, I think it's really wonderful if you can use the same techniques in the same design over and over again but with a different twist and so this one will be the repeat of the bookends. So I just cut out all of my smaller pictures and I wanted to do them um, across the page. Um, I used that brown dotted paper in the middle and then I am going to use um, the blue arrow paper as a strip on the bottom of that uh, lower paper line or no the photo line that I created and I was thinking that I wanted to kind of create a 
uh, sequence with my images where it starts from the morning and then kind of ends at night where she blew her um, her cake and uh, oh I'm pointing out that because the paper has arrows I made sure that the arrows were pointing towards the center so that the eye can be led in that direction and here I am um, like I said this is very new to me so I wanted to see if I can incorporate a pre-printed journaling even though I don't know exactly what I am going to do with design yet and um, I managed to do it to to get it in there but um, I'm sure if I had pre-planned it it would look better um, because now I had to move all of my pictures and all of that lined up pictures didn't quite work out really well and uh, the way that I wanted it to go as far as the sequence of the events didn't quite work out just a little bit I mean it's still there's still you can see the sequence starting from the left to right which is morning all the way to the end to to nighttime with the with the blowing of the cake but I think it would have been better if I had pre-thought about everything including the journaling but um, I think in the bigger picture or in the grand scheme of things it's okay if it's not totally the way I had envisioned it to be I'm sure I'm not the only scrapper out there that changes their mind once they start crafting and so I am okay with just letting go with my initial plan so going back to the layout I am cutting some of these um, two by uh, no three by four pictures and I had used this paper before where I punched out a shape out of it and so I wanted to use the the negative spot of the paper and just kind of use it as a frame and it has the word birthday girl in there and I found a picture which is of my daughter in one of those um, what is it called uh, bumper cars and I wanted to kind of use that as a frame on that picture so that's what I'm gonna do there and then I noticed that there is that empty space on the left side of it and so I'm going to find another paper that would work to put on there because I just think that that's kind of off where there's that space right there um, I mean it still matches with everything else but I kinda wanted to put something in there just to fill up that spot and I found one that also had a circle but um, on the paper but I'm going to cover that circle part with the existing 3x4 that I created and here I'm trying to figure out how I can incorporate these stickers um, they're really themed very strongly themed pictures so I walked away because I couldn't figure out what I'm gonna do but I did notice though that the top and bottom of the center lacked a little bit something something so I went through my scraps and I found this glittered purple um, paper I think this is from the um, die cuts with a view and I'm going to punch some scallop um, edge on on it I, I think this punch is called water thread um, it's from Fiskars it's one of my favorite ones it's an older uh, punch but I still love it and so I'm just going to cut about three quarter of an inch of a border and then I'm going to add that so you can see one of them cut on a certain part because the paper already had a cut on there so when I trimmed it it broke this two, uh, one piece into two pieces but it's okay I can fix that and there I think it worked perfectly with my page it wasn't too strong um, of an addition to the page but at the same time it gave it that little something something that it was lacking and then um, before I went ahead and adhere, I haven't adhered anything here just to let you guys know um, but I'm going to add my journaling or my sorry my date on the journaling and it's just gonna be using this roller stamp this is a I think an Amy Tangerine stamp so the dates on the left side of it has words and I don't really want any of the words so I cover that up with post-it and then basically I covered it up with post-it and then um, add my ink then peeled off the post-it and then stamped the date onto my journaling block so I think I am ready to commit to all these I'm gonna move them aside and just a little bit about the pictures so um, as you can tell this is a birthday picture and um, 
this is my daughter's, I think, seventh birthday. So he's she's ten now, so three years ago. And um, in the in the morning, she dressed up because it was a school day. So she dressed up really nice. She wanted to wear a dress to school. She's one of those girly girls. And so I took a picture of her with her dress just before she went out the door. Oh, and just before she woke up, um, she saw her gifts all wrapped up and um, one of the things that I did with one of her gifts was instead of creating a, um, a gift bowl I actually made a hair bowl as a center of that um, of the gift and so she was able to wear the hair bow on her hair before she went to school and then when she got home then oh before that I while she was at school I made her a cake and then I brought her I brought the cake to school I dabble in um, cake decorating and I'm not good at it I just like to learn it for these kinds of occasions like my kids birthday and so I used a fondant uh, uh, kind of cake and I created a, a birthday cake but then I also made cupcakes which she shared with her classmates and then um, in the afternoon when she came home she was able to open one gift and then we had dinner at it's um, it's kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese but it's more for older kids because they have um, other kinds of games and kind of amusement park type rides and and then the food it's not the best food but um, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet of pizza which of course the kids love so that's kind of have been our tradition when it's her birthday we would go to it's um, and they could play and eat and just have fun so and then when we got home um, I had to go to a class because I'm taking some college classes so I took I went to school uh, I went to my class anyways and then right as soon as I came back everybody was waiting for me so she can blow out her candle make a wish and then have some cake just in um, in time before it was time to go to bed so that was her day and it was filled with lots of memories and I think that's another reason why I love doing um, double page spreads uh, I have been listening to this podcast by scrap gals I don't know if you guys have heard it if you haven't heard it it's a really awesome podcast and I'm going to make sure to add the link on the description below but one of the things that I was listening to this week was the idea I think they were interviewing Jen Scow. I like to listen to the old um, old episodes. So I don't know if this was in the 2015. Um, it was made in 2015 or 2014. I can't remember. But they were interviewing Jen Scow, which is one of the um, popular scrapbookers right now. And she mentioned that she just likes to, she feels like she can tell the story of an event with just a couple of pictures. And I, I totally get that with some um, events, but for me still, this is me talking, okay? I'm not saying anything negative about other people and how they scrap, but for me, I feel like birthdays and holidays and all that events cannot be said in just a couple of pictures. I mean, you can say... Uh, something about that event in a couple of pictures but for me personally um, I think at least at least 10 pictures would be um, would would be enough to summarize what is happening in a specific um, uh, occasion such as birthdays and holidays so that's why I still go for double page spread. I know I am a minority now, being that there's a lot of people that do just 12 by 12 page, which is a single photo or just one or two photos um, maximum. But I don't know. I am still, I guess I am a, um, a traditional in that sense where double page spreads just makes me happy. So I hope that I am resonating to some of you. And to some that don't, I hope that you will take some time to try out a double page spread and see how it feels. I mean, sometimes it's overwhelming to work on a larger scale. I know sometimes I feel that way, but I think that's why a lot of pictures work for me because I do not have to worry about such a big of a scale because I know I have pictures to fill it with, if that makes any sense. 
So going back to the page, I'm just committing to everything. I'm adhering all of the items with my favorite adhesive. Sorry that you're seeing my hair <laughs> there, but um, I am using the ultra th ultra thin um, dots from Glue Dots and then also some mini Glue Dots just to add to those itty bitty spots in my page. Um, I decided that two pictures right there, the vertical, I mean horizontal, two by three photos of my daughter and my husband as well as pictures of her gifts are going to go on the bottom and then I'm going to use some of those stickers to um, put um, a title on the on the top. At first I just thought maybe that birthday girl that's on that paper with a circle that I framed the image one of the image with would be enough but I just think that it's too small to be a title so I'm just going to play with my stickers. Now I have some dimensional stickers and they are too really I mean super dimensional. So I adhered one of um, them here, the one that says cake time, but I just thought they were just too bulky. So I took one of the foams because I think they're double foam, that's why they're too bulky. So I took one of the foams on the very back of it and just peeled that off and I'm just going to adhere that with some ultra thin adhesive and so there's still that one um, layer of foam in between the stickers but then I'm taking out one of the other ones because I just know for me in all my experience of scrapbooking that once I put this in my album if it's too bulky it just causes some kind of weird thing going on with um, the sheet protectors um, if you have been scrapbooking for a long time and have a ton of um, of albums you know what I'm talking about but in, in time it will just cause this bumpiness in the sheet protectors and then it will cause it to be a little bit loose and things are actually falling out of my page just because um, another reason for that is because I didn't use quality adhesives when I was starting you know I was starting didn't know what good adhesive were I was just kind of going by what would be the most cost-effective for me which at that time was mostly just um, acid free glue sticks yes I would buy them at Costco <laughs> those were the days so I think I am done with this page I think I am going to add these um, flat stickers and then that would be it for me I think this um, video is going to cut out before I finish all of it but here are all of the close-ups of the page I hope that you like this share of a double page spread and watch out for another double page spread coming up soon thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon bye